Hi, this video just shows my uh, 300 watt solar panel system. So this is my solar installation. In the late afternoon, we're December 8th, so the days are getting very short. It's 3 o'clock here. Um, California time, but just across the river over there, it's uh, 4 o'clock. So that gives you an idea of the lateness of the day. And uh, with the rig facing the due east, I don't get any shadows. So again, it was set up so if I could face the rig pretty much due east or southeast, um, I'll not have too many shadows, at least for now. So you can see that it doesn't take a lot. There's four places to lock each Kyocera panel down and these quick snap together fittings make it super easy. The hardest part is looking ahead onto your roof looking for potential shadows. Look at those big shadows on this side and here. So on my roof I have shadows everywhere. Then I just went down through one of the vents next to the uh, bathroom sink so I didn't drill any holes. Try to get everything as good as I can. I have been through quite a bit of rain and no leaks yet. Hopefully we won't have any leaks ever because I'll stay on top of it. So, But you can see all the other shadows there. Not on the solar panels yet. Almost ca catching this corner will not stop the whole panel from working. This uh, Kyocera works with partial shade. Now when I installed these, a uh, tip, I left the uh, cardboard, I cut it to cover the top and then taped it to the top of both panels after I put the hardware on the back and that way um, they weren't going to produce any power while I was working on the uh, setup because I did set this up in full sunlight. So that's a tip. Get it all set up and then come up and uh, take the cardboard off the top. It also protects them um, when you're moving them up so you don't scratch them. So my bathroom uh, sink is right next to the um, table. And so I just went underneath the uh, table in the storage and measured where I thought the uh, wire should be coming down along the outside of the vent. It's not in the vent. Some people actually put it in the vent and then cut a hole. But I'm using this uh, 8 gauge wire so I wanted to make sure that uh, I didn't create any kind of a leak, possible leak, by having stuff drip down the pipe. Then I wrap the wire around, goes under the table, and over to this corner where a lot of wire was. Those two wires from the solar panel are running right up to the solar charger, the TPS 1230. And then two more wires are running back down exits the bottom of the coach and then comes over and hooks into the battery which is located right under the stairs. You might not be able to see that. There you go, that's a little bit better. It was a little sunny there. So my run from the charger to the battery is actually only about uh, it's less than six feet. So the uh, 8 gauge wires from the solar controller come down into the battery compartment. The positive is hooked to a uh, 
Blue Sky fuse, that's a 50 amp KNL type fuse. And then to the, for me, to the center battery of the positive, and then the negative is going to be on this other battery here. I'm trying to balance the input and output of these batteries. They're hooked in parallel, but uh, if I just go outside outside, then I'm uh, not working that inside battery as much. So the inverter is hooked to the middle battery on the positive side, and the negative side is hooked also on the middle battery. And then I've got a Go Power 15. Watt high surge inverter, and then I just plug in my power cord to the outside, just as though I were plugging into the house. Then I don't have to rewire anything. However, you have to watch out and make sure that you turn your charger off because you don't want your inverter trying to charge the batteries as it's pulling power from the batteries. I'll automate, automate that someday. Right now I just have it on a separate uh, breaker and I just make sure that breaker is off. While we're in here, we're going to check the water level. And I just use a, the mix miser. This is for like adding uh, juice and stuff, but it works pretty good. It's got a small tip that will fit into the holes. Some distilled water. You can see that or not. And then I just pour a little bit of that into a cup. Suck it up a little bit. then I can uh, go ahead and fill my batteries with not getting, without getting water all over. And it works like a champ. So when I want power, I just simply plug that cord in to one of the 110 outlets. Plug the other end to the outside of the coach and come in here and turn on the inverter from the remote. So then I just come in here and flip this guy on and we're ready to go. Just got to remember to turn it off Unplug the uh, 110 cord from either the coach or from the inverter. I usually do it from the inverter because I don't have to go outside. I just slip the stairs. Um, and uh, before you put any 110 power. You can run the generator um, when it's like this, but you can't run the generator when you've got the inverter plugged in, even if this is off. So you got to remember both things. And then, of course, if you have your battery charger on your convert, uh, converter off because you didn't want to be using the batteries and charging them at the same time, turn that back on. So when the generator comes on or when you have house power, you'll get charging. Other than that, it's been working pretty good. did want to mention that uh, I've had the batteries are brand new now for just six months and I've used a half a gallon of distilled water. So you got to watch that water in those batteries when you live in it and use those batteries. Alrighty. So a few specifications. Uh, the wire panels to the solar controller were 8 gauge, 18 feet. From the solar controller to the batteries is 8 gauge also, 6 feet. Inverter to batteries, 2 watt gauge, only 2 feet. And then I had 250 watt Kyocera panels and one Topre TPS 1230 solar controller. I have a Go Power 1500 high surge inverter and a Go Power remote controller.
So all together with all of these things and me providing the labor, the total cost was up $1,340. I think the labor would be considerable. They're charging about $95 an hour these days. Enjoy.